So welcome everybody. We are doing exercise two, observing the self and the body by the self. And we were on step five. We've been discussing step five. So um, in step one of exercise two, we said that we can see these two realities. I, the self, that I am there. I am an existential reality. I exist. I can see that because I can see my activities going on within me. I can also see that the body is there. And if I see how I am able to observe the body, I notice that I am observing the body only when I can read the sensation from the body. So the body is also a reality. It exists. And these are two distinct realities. I, the self, a unit of consciousness. And the body, which is a material unit. In step two, we were trying to observe the interaction between the self and the body. That this interaction between me, the self and the body. So I give some instruction to the body. The body follows. There are many events taking place in the body. Many sensations are there in the body. And I read these sensations, whichever I consider to be important at the time. I taste those sensations that I need. So you find that the instructions I am giving, that is information. The sensations I am reading, that is also information. So this interaction between the self and the body is only in the form of information. Nothing physical is being transferred. This we tried to observe in step two. In step three, we were looking at who is the decision maker in all of this interaction between And we were able to see that the decisions regarding all this exchange of information that is happening. The body is just following whatever I instructed to do. And I'm doing this from time to time, not all the time. Very small percentage of the time I'm involved with the body. Rest of the time, I'm busy with myself. And I may not even be aware of the presence of the body. So in all of this, I am the seer, I am the observer, I am the doer or the decision maker. And I am the experiencer or enjoyer in the case of pleasurable experiences. So all of these decisions are mine. In step four, we were trying to observe the distance between the self and the body when we read the sensations that are taking place in the body. So we ask that question that if you are reading a sensation taking place in the body, Find out, are you the sensation? Are you in the sensation? Or are you at a distance from the sensation? Some distance between me and the sensation. I can read the sensations that are taking place in any part of the body from where I am. So I can observe these sensations at a distance from me. 
So there is some distance between me and the sensation. Or we can say there is a distance between me, the self, and the sensation which is in the body. So there is a distance. Step five, we would look more of the detail of the interaction that we have with the body and the information that we get of the world outside through the body. So if you look at the sensations that we read, they can be of two types. One of events that are happening within the body and two it could be my interaction with another human being. So the effect of the behavior of the other person or it could be a situation outside, an environmental change, a physiochemical change, a change in the weather, and so on. And that has some impact on the body. So that leads to sensations in the body. So for instance, when I talk to somebody, that person says something. So at the level of the body, what's happening is that the person when they speak something, the sound of the ears of my body and there is some sensation due to this in the body. If you look at the environmental changes that are happening outside, so the weather changes, it's cold weather. I can feel the cold air on the skin of my body. There is some sensation there. And if you look at the events happening within the body, so if we take note, we may be able to notice that there are sensations in the body. Like we took the example of sensations there. Even though we did not notice them a moment before that, before we started paying attention. So we'll see that none of these sensations are reaching me directly. There's some effect on the body. There is some sensation. There is some effect of the sensation on the body. And I'm choosing to read the sensation or not to read that sensation. If I don't consider it important, I don't read it. I am not even aware of it at that time. So when we looked further at this, that if it comes to when we say, you know, my interaction with other human beings, so somebody is speaking. That is, when they are speaking, like we said, the sound of the words they are speaking it reaches the body, it has some impact on the body. There is some sensation generated by it. I read that sensation by choice, if and when I think it is important to me. And I taste that sensation. And I give meaning to that sensation according to my own preconditioning, according to my own sanskar, these sanskars could be based on just some preconditionings, some assumptions, acceptances that I have without any basis on reality or they could also be on the basis of knowing or understanding. So if we take this example, Somebody is speaking harsh words in my presence. I observe this. Now, when they are speaking, there is some effect of those words, of the sound of those words that reaches my body. There is some sensation. By choice, I am choosing to read that sensation. That means I am paying attention to those words. 
there could be so many things happening around me but i have the choice whether to pay attention to those words or not to pay attention to those words so i am choosing to hear those words i should also understand the language that the person is speak these words that the person is speaking so i am tasting that sensation and i am associating some meaning to the sensation now it depends on my sanskar what kind of meaning i give to that sensation so if the person is speaking harshly one way of noticing this may be the meaning that i may give to this may be that this person is shouting at me another way of looking at it could be this person is shouting he seems to be uncomfortable he seems to be in distress it looks like he may need some help maybe i can help him i will notice that the meaning has changed in these two different scenarios what he said was the same thing that hasn't changed what has changed is how i interpreted this one interpretation was with a feeling of opposition that he is shouting at me and there may be a quick succession of so many thoughts behind it or so many thoughts stemming from that feeling of opposition that why he should shout and i am getting ready to shout back with this feeling of opposition in the other case i am looking at it as if this person is himself in pain now here i am having a feeling of relationship so if it is your child and your child is shouting you say the child is tired maybe the child didn't eat properly let me take care of the child then we'll talk later it's okay so now i have given a different meaning so my sanskars are very active in all of this and it depends on my sanskar so if i have accepted the relationship with one person i may give a different meaning to that sensation if i don't see my relationship with that person i may give a different meaning to that same sensation it's up to me i decide i choose i interpret the way i want to see it the way i see it because of my sanskar and then i give instructions to the body accordingly and the body just follows we can observe this for ourselves does it happen can you respond in the chat so we'll see that because of this sanskar i behave differently with different people even though they may be saying the same thing and i may not be aware of that so like we were mentioning it becomes cold these days it is cold weather so there is some effect on the body there is some impact there is some sensation in the body i taste that sensation and then i give meaning to that sensation along with my sanskar so the impact of that cold weather i can feel the cool air on the skin now the same sensation one person may wear lots and lots of jackets quilts blankets cover up and say oh it's too cold after tasting that sensation another person may say hmm it is cold if i wear a jacket i'm okay or a sweater or you know 
no i'm not feeling so cold and i can carry on on with my duties or with my work same cold weather same temperature one person responds one way another person reacts in another way what's the difference we may be having different sanskars different acceptances these acceptances can be based on understanding or they can be in the lack of understanding so we look at food if we take the example of food same food it may have chilies in it one person eats it and says oh wonderful what tasty food lovely another person takes one bite and same food different sanskars similarly if we look at events in the body so they lead to some sensations in the body so for instance if we look at we have taken this example before we have a headache so when we say we have a headache what is actually happening is some physiochemical change has happened in the body that is leading to some sensation when i decisively read that sensation i taste that sensation i decide that this is pain and i give meaning to that sensation along with my sanskar so if my sanskar is based on understanding i can see that this body is a separate reality i am a separate reality and i have taken responsibility for the body so if i can observe this pain in the head then i can take care of it maybe i didn't drink enough water maybe i didn't eat at the right time maybe there is some gas floating because i could not digest the food whatever may be the reason i try to um you know fix that problem so that the pain in the head comes down but if i have a sanskar that is not based on understanding i don't understand these two separate realities and i think i am the body then when this sensation happens i give it the meaning pain when i taste that sensation but now my sanskar is driving my feeling and i feel very disturbed i am anxious i am worried because i think this is all happening to me and maybe you know same headache but yesterday when i was googling something i noticed somebody mentioned about headaches and brain tumors and so i start thinking about brain tumors and then i start imagining that this tumor is creating so much I don't know it i am assuming something because of my sanskar so my sanskar can be based on knowing or it can be based on assuming something without really knowing it so whenever understanding is not it is a lack of competence there is no change in natural acceptance because when i look from the point of natural acceptance from the highest activity the pure observer within myself we all see the same thing the natural acceptance remains the same although i may not be aware of the natural acceptance at that moment i may not be referring to it we will find that this meaning that we are giving to the sensation 
all of these steps that are happening, there are many steps involved in this. So some events are happening on the outside, like the behavior of other human beings, some kind of chemical change, all of this is leading to some sensation. This has some impact on the body. There is effect on the body. There is I'm choosing to read or taste that sensation. There, it is my decision. It is my choice whether to read it or not to read it, taste it or not to taste it. The meaning I give to that sensation is based on my sanskar. So, what meaning I give to it? That is also a choice, which can be different in different people. And whether I am influenced by this sensation or not, that also is my choice. Because I am deciding my feeling, whether it is the right feeling or not the right feeling. So if it is the right feeling, which means a feeling in line with my natural acceptance. Like for instance, in the case of you know behavior of another human being, if I have a feeling of relationship, I am happy. If I have a feeling of opposition, I am unhappy. So this choice I am making. And of course, if I have this feeling of relationship, I am responding to the other person's behavior. If I have a feeling of opposition, it's possible I start reacting to this. And this all depends on my sanskar. All this is happening within me. And then if I wish to express it outside, again, that is my choice. I may choose to express it outside, in which case I instruct my body accordingly. Or I may choose not to express it outside. The body will just act according to my instruction. And that leads to the expression outside. So here you can see what part is outside, what part is happening in the body, the brown area is representing the body. And this purple area is representing the self. So very little is really happening outside. The reality is one thing. But a whole lot of stuff is happening within me. And it is dependent on my sanskar. So based on my sanskar, I have a certain feeling. Based on that feeling, my thoughts start flowing. Based on that, there is either reaction or response within me. And then if I choose to give that instruction to the body to express it outside, then it gets expressed outside. But even if it doesn't get expressed outside, even if I choose not to express it outside, that reaction is happening within me and it is leading to disharmony within me. That also I must observe, that this is also a reaction. Now we are talking about some event that is happening within the body. That is also leading to some sensations within the body. Again, I have a choice. Whether I read them or I don't read them, that is my choice. If I choose to read them, some of them, and if I taste that sensation, I give the meaning to that sensation based on my sanskar, like we were just talking about the headache. And my sanskar could be based on just some acceptance that I have without knowing, or it could be based on knowing or understanding. If it is based on knowing, I don't get influenced by this sensation and with the right feeling I respond to the situation. But if my sanskar is not based on knowing, I have some acceptances without knowing, then it is not clear whether I will be 
influenced or uninfluenced. It is not clear whether my feeling would be right or wrong. So it is not clear whether I will be happy or unhappy. I may or may not get influenced by that. And I may respond or I may react. And then, of course, if I decide to express this outside, then I instruct the body accordingly. But whether I express it outside or not, whatever is happening within me is deciding whether I am feeling happy, meaning that I am giving all of this happiness, unhappiness, the feeling that I am... I may be making that choice without awareness. And I can choose to respond rather than to react. I can choose not to be influenced by the sensation. I can choose to have the right feeling. I can choose happiness over unhappiness. All of this is my choice. So reading or not reading the sensation. That is my choice. Some sensation is there. If I choose to read it, I read it. If I choose not to read it, I don't read it. That is my decision. So my sanskar is playing a very big role here. Because if I consider that sensation to be important, I read it. This is my sanskar driving this. If I don't consider it important, I don't read it. That is also a decision that I am coming to because of my sanskar. So my sanskar is playing a very important role. Then the meaning that I give to that sensation, that also depends upon my sanskar. And I am getting influenced by it or not influenced by it, that depends on my sanskar. Because it is because of my sanskar that I am deciding my feeling. So all of this is dependent on my sanskar. Therefore, it is important for me to observe this sanskar of mine. So if my sanskar is based on understanding, I naturally have the right feeling, a feeling that is naturally acceptable. And I'm in a state of happiness. When I'm in a state of happiness, I can rightly evaluate the situation, that sensation that I'm giving, and I can respond. But if my sanskar is based on assumptions, then depending on my assumption, depending on the acceptances that I have created for myself, my feeling is not definite. So if I don't evaluate this sensation properly, if I don't give you know, the right meaning to it, then it is possible that I might become excited by this input and I may react. I may be unhappy. So therefore, I need to observe my sanskar. Is my sanskar based on understanding or is it based on assumption? So if any questions are there, any observations are there with all of this, you can take it. Yesterday, Kumar Bhaiya had put some assignments I saw in the group. So if we could do those, if we could observe these things within ourselves, we can share this. Namaste, Didi. Namaste. Uh, Didi, uh, I just want to understand, like <clears throat> we are discussing that it is the uh, the self which is giving instructions to the body to perform mm -hmm. and uh, the power is with the self. Then I just want to understand, like uh, when uh, people are uh, likely bedridden almost or having like no control over their bodies or what is happening in their body uh, they don't want to be diseased and they don't want to be on the body can they give instruction 
to the body to just get healed up and then uh, the body can respond accordingly so please uh, tell us something about this situation didi yeah so see these two realities we must understand them separately when it comes to the body the recognition and fulfillment is very definite the body doesn't have a choice in the matter okay so if i don't you know i may and it should continue forever now the body cannot take that instruction because its recognition and fulfillment is very definite it is going through that process of change by which these physiochemical changes that are taking place in the body are leading to that progression so from birth to you know growth is happening body is getting large up to a point and then that growth you know in terms of height and so on that stops after a point body will not keep growing even if i give it instruction because this is something that is very definite the body doesn't have any choice in the matter right so it depends on whether i understand this or not it's like if i don't understand the law of gravity that is working right and i you know give the instruction to the body to fly and i say you know it is something that is very definite the recognition and fulfillment it can't change when this law of gravity is working the body is going to fall down unless i am sitting in an airplane and you know so i have to understand this so if i understand that the recognition and fulfillment in the body is very definite i will not not try to give instructions otherwise when it comes to you know damage in the body if i had understanding i may not choose the decisions i had chosen which may have led to the damage in the body but when i don't have understanding i may make many choices for instance to make it very blunt or to make it easy to understand i may choose say there is a person who is smoking i may choose to smoke to give the instruction to the body to smoke even though i can see that or i have read i have the information that this is harmful for the body why because i am trying to get happiness out of that smoking at that moment and i am not paying attention to what's going to happen later the impact on the body because the impact on the body is very definite that cigarette smoke cannot be nurturing for the body it will cause harm to the body that i cannot change isn't it but i can certainly change my choice i can choose not to give this stuff to the body which is harmful choice is up to me but once it's gone to the body that recognition and fulfillment is very definite in the body self that is highly evolved in a self that is um say a realized self now in that self that has reached to its highest potential get into now because for that we need to build our competence a lot and but when we are talking of the average person who is sick understanding is not complete who have made these choices often which have led to damage to the body and now they are in a state where they are suffering that damage to the body so they are not able to choose to make the body healthy and they are expecting some change in the body it's not going to happen on its own isn't it because 
whatever is happening in the body, it is based on the instruction of the self. Of course, the body has its own self-organization. It is going by the material laws of nature. That part is there. But I am, I have been disrupting the harmony in the body. Now the body is in complete disharmony. So now I become dependent on a doctor or somebody else to fix the body. Because now I don't know what to do. Isn't it? Can you see the difference? So, um, we can look at this um, assignment. So, this first point, in your interaction with your family members or colleagues at work, observe each step of the interaction. The other's behavior or words are leading to some sensation in your body. Right? And you are choosing, you are deciding to read this sensation. You taste the sensation, you give some meaning to it. That is dependent on your sanskar. Try to see, is this based on knowing or is it based on an assumption without knowing? And try to check, are you being influenced or are you not being influenced by this? What is the feeling you choose to have for the other? Are you happy or unhappy? Are you responding or reacting? Now this response or reaction we are talking of within you. And then do you give the instruction to the body to express it outside? Does the body follow? This step by step if we see within ourselves, right now you may not be interacting with anybody. But recall any incident that happened yesterday, any interaction that comes to mind. And this step assignment, if we can try to recall this right now for the 10 minutes and see what is what actually happened and how you gave meaning, it may be worth to be able to become aware of this. So we'll try to do this exercise right now for 10 minutes or so. I will mute myself. Just try to see this. Recall the incident from yesterday and ask yourself these. Every point at this, check what happened within you. Become aware of it. And we'll take your observation after that. Okay, we've been observing for about 10 minutes now. And hopefully, we could see this interaction that happened and how we um, gave meaning and how we either got influenced and maybe reacted or if we chose to respond and we may be able to see the sanskar behind these. So um, we can take some observation. There is something in the chat. What makes a person inherently confrontational by Vishalji? So you have to check, is it inherently confrontational or has the person developed a sanskar like that based on the condition? But there may be a lot of past experiences which have led to or which have conditioned this kind of response in a person or this kind of reaction in a person. That is the only difference. Otherwise, if you look at the natural acceptance, we are all similar. The difference is only in our conditionings. That is what is the sanskars we are talking. Asked, what is the remedy? Remedy is this only, that we work for understanding. Because if we understand and we see the reality the way it is, then we can get past all these conditioning, all these false acceptances that we have collected, gathered. Um, Vinay Chidraji's question is there, is the two have difference between based on tasting and based on liking? 
I'm not sure I follow the question, but what I like or dislike is also based on my sanskar. Like somebody likes salty food, another person likes sweet food. What I like and dislike is based on my sanskar. One person sees a lizard on the wall and screams with anxiety. Another person just looks at it and sees it as a lizard on the wall. So all this, we have differences because of our conditionings, because of our past experiences, which we have gathered and which we have formed as a sanskar. It is showing up again and again in our behavior outside. So time is up now, but uh, we can continue this discussion. Tomorrow again, I'll be traveling. So I'll be requesting Kumar Bhaiya to take the session tomorrow. Um, but we can go through this, try to see this interaction very closely. This is an important thing. Today, even though this assignment was given before, but today, if we can observe all our interactions with our family members, with our colleagues at work, and try to observe you know, how these steps are happening within us, we'll be able to probably become aware of um, you know, many things that we take for granted, that we say are inherent or innate. But what is really innate to us, that is, if we refer and everything else that we have put on top of it based on our own preconditionings, our own, that is all from the outside. If we really notice this, then it can make a difference in how we look at things, how we look at behaviors of other people. So we'll do this observation all day today and take the observations tomorrow.